What is going on, CH family? I hope you all are having a wonderful day so far. Today's training, we're going to be talking about some mindset today mostly. So we're just going to go over some mindset, some strategies, and things that we have to stop doing if we seriously want to lose weight and keep it off the rest of our lives and become that 10% who finally do it. Okay, so this is going to be a very, very good training. I'm excited to dive into this one today. As you all know, I love talking about habit building. I love talking about motivation and all that. Um, so this is going to be a good one. So first and foremost, I want to point something out. So when it comes to mostly what we're going to talk about today, when it comes to building these permanent changes and, you know, getting into a weight loss routine and making the shift happen, there's a few things that we need. First of all, we need to know what to do in the first place because you don't want to, it's like, let's say your, your goal is to, you know, head to the mall and the mall is this way. But you start walking that way, like it, you might get there eventually if you go all the way around the world, but like you're going to just go the wrong way. So it's like, first of all, you need to know what to do when it comes to the weight loss. Second thing is you need to build the habits around that so it becomes like second nature. So therefore, therefore you can stay consistent. But in order to build those habits, there's going to be a little bit of an uncomfortable zone of where you go from ruining your old habits, getting rid of the old habits, you know, the bad old eating habits, beliefs about food, all of this to creating the new positive habits that are going to help and align with the goals you want to accomplish. And in there, you need to build discipline. So therefore, you can break those habits and, and, and get to where you want to go. OK, so that's what we're going to be talking about here. Now, I just want to let you know that when it comes to building discipline, it's just like any other skill. You know, it's about putting the reps in, putting time into it and staying consistent with it and pushing yourself and never giving up. You know, it's just like anything like riding a bike. You got to practice, practice, practice. You got to try, 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 try. You fail, you fail, you fail and you fail your way to success and eventually you get it. And uh, and, and that's really how it's done. It's not going to come overnight. So it's a, it's a little skill. So ultimately, Jumping into this, so we're going to talk about the things that we must stop doing today if we're serious about making a permanent weight loss change, okay? So um, first and foremost, one thing I want to put out there is that you will never, ever, ever, ever be like 100% ready. You will never be ready whatsoever. And honestly, going into your weight loss journey with the mindset of like, I'm not ready yet, that's not aligned with what you want because if you want to make this weight loss like your lifestyle, if you want to lose the weight and keep it off and that be your lifestyle, then you got to understand like you're, you're never going to be ready for it. It doesn't matter if you're ready or not. You just got to do it. So by telling yourself that you're not ready and, and letting that hold you back, that is keeping you in the same mind frame that has gotten you to where you're at. So it's like self-sabotage. It's just a cycle that's going to keep going and going and going. So we got to understand that, you know, we're never, ever going to be ready when it comes to many of the things we want to accomplish. If you're a mom, you probably weren't ready when you had kids. If you went to school, you probably were not 100% ready when you went to school. You just you go in anyways, you do it, you figure it out and make it happen. So ultimately, the longer that we put things off here, the harder it gets. OK, the reason why is because we get into these comfort zones. OK, and we build these really strong habits and routines. You know, as people, that's what we do. It's it's uh, we want to conserve our energy as much as possible, which is why we create habits. Because imagine if you had to think all the time about breathing, like I got to breathe, I got to breathe. It's it's going to be draining for you. So that's why we build habits. OK, in our subconscious mind which controls 96% of our lives, okay? That's literally why you can go to work, you can drive to work in the morning, and you can be up here daydreaming about, you know, your vacation that you just went on in, <laughs> a few months ago, and uh, you can be driving to work, and you'll just almost like robotically get there, okay? It's like airplane mode, okay? So ultimately, that's why we got to understand that the longer we put this off, the harder it is to change because we firm, we build those old habits, okay? And it just becomes harder to break. And that's why it's important that we just take action immediately on whatever you want. Go get it because you can 100% do it. So what do we have to stop doing here today, though, if we seriously want to make this change? First and foremost is self-judgment, okay? Judging yourself is is not helpful because ultimately it's just you're 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 being hard on yourself you're being way too hard on yourself and that's not going to help you improve it's important to observe and watch what you're doing and review it like i review myself every single monday to see what my past week went like but i don't judge myself i don't make myself feel bad about it because understand i'm a person i gotta learn i gotta grow in order to improve i just have to show up for myself and keep getting better but the thing is is like you can't repeat the same mistakes all the time that's why you have 
have to review yourself, have to, you know, look back on what you're doing and give a solid reflection, be real with yourself, but don't judge yourself because judging yourself and being hard on yourself, it doesn't serve you whatsoever. It is, uh, it's, it's not helpful at all. Okay. So, don't judge yourself. It's uh, it's all about you know learning, showing up for yourself every day just to improve. For example, like in school. Okay. So the next thing is thinking you need motivation. Okay. A lot of us, uh, you know, think that we need motivation to do something, but in reality, like you don't. You don't at all. You don't need no motivation at all. Motivation will give you this extra spark and you know make you all pumped up to go do it. But you don't need it. Like you just have to have a habit and show up for yourself and make it happen. That's why it's so important that we build habits and we build a discipline around that to keep it consistent because your motivation will run out. I'm telling you, I went to the gym last night. It was 8.30 p.m. It was a later night for me in the gym. But I went and dined anyways. And I didn't even think about it because it's just who I am. It's how I identify myself. I understand what I want to accomplish. I understand what I have to do to get there. And I just go do it. There's no point in complaining. There's no point in me whining about it or nothing. It's just like, if this is what I truly want, well, this is what I got to do to get there. So I just go do it. Okay? So we don't need motivation. Okay? We definitely don't need motivation. And honestly, too, what happens is that when you get into your weight loss journey, what's going to happen is that you're going to, it's going to be like a snowball effect. Okay? As long as you take consistent action, you keep showing up for yourself and, and, and willingly work on improving, it's going to be the snowball effect. You're going to lose some weight at first. You might hit a little barrier here around like the second, third weekend, and that might last you for three weeks or so. And then after, it's like you're just going to get into the routine. It's going to be easier and easier. It's going to become robotic more. You're going to get more progress. You're going to lose body fat. You're going to build more strength and muscle. That's going to boost your metabolism. You're going to get better and better. You're going to learn. You're going to get more advanced. And it just gets better and better and better to the point where, like, it's just who you are. You're not even stressed about a time frame or nothing. It's just something you go do. And then as a side effect, like, you're just going to get the results out of it. Like, for me now, I have goals in my mind and everything. I have things I'm working on. But I don't really care for a time frame. I just do everything as best as I possibly can in the routine that I love that's realistic for me, sustainable for me. And I just do it. And then I just allow time to take its time. Like I just go do it and then the results end up happening. I'm not stressing about trying to get there overnight or anything because I just I just don't care. I know that by me just focusing on what I got to do, my daily actions and my weekly actions, it's going to get there. You know, control what you can control and let go of what you can't control. You can't control time, okay? <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't control time. So we have to let go of that and, uh, and just trust in the process, okay? Just show up for yourself every day. And therefore, over time, the snowball effect will happen. Okay? So the next thing that we don't need here is negative self-talk. Okay? So a lot of us, a lot of us are in our chat. I can I, I bet you a lot of us watching this and, and, and myself included and just people in general, um, I bet there's more negative self-talk than positive talk. I, I bet there is. And I, there, I don't I just don't know why it is like that so much. But we can't allow that, okay? Because imagine if that chatter inside your brain was like a physical person right beside you. You would want to kill them because they're just like so annoying and so negative, like just beating you down when you look in the mirror and like saying like, oh, you're fat, you're ugly, like why are you doing this and stuff, like putting you down. That's not going to help you. That's not going to serve you, okay? And this is this is a harder one to change because it's it's hard to understand that, you know, your thoughts are not you, okay? Your beliefs and everything are not you. These are just things that were created in the past and that have formed inside you. You can change it, okay? But in order to change, you have to, you know, be aware of that and step up for yourself. You have to be that bigger person for yourself and say, hey, you know what? I'm tired of treating myself like shit. I can't do that to myself. I'm not going to allow that anymore. And then when your mind tries to, because it's all programmed inside of you, it's just like, it's literally like a coding in a computer. When you try to put yourself down, you got to pick yourself up. You got to say, no, I, I can't do that. And say three positive things about yourself rather than that one negative thing. Because what's going to happen is that if not, you'll get stuck in that cycle and it'll just keep going, going, and you'll just sabotage yourself, put yourself down. And if you don't have self-respect for yourself, if you don't have self-love for yourself, then you're never going to do anything good for yourself, okay? You will always get what your energy is focused on. I hope that makes sense, everybody. Um, so ultimately, we have to stop the negative self-talk, and it starts by us stopping it when it happens, okay, staying very aware of it. And to be very aware of it, we need to see it in our faces. So for me, whenever I'm working on goals, 
um, in, in my dreams. I have all over. I have it on my phone screen. I have goals all over me because I always need reminders because life is so hectic and overwhelming that it's so easy to get caught up and, and distracted and fall off our goals. So that's why, and, and of course, you know, eventually when you do lose that initial motivation, that spark, you know, you, you maybe you, you will forget your why initially. So that's why you need to be reminded about it. So you just keep showing up, showing up. It's right there. It's right there. And just reminding you to keep going. Okay. So that's the negative self-talk. It's not going to serve you. Now, the next thing is, I just kind of mentioned it, is forgetting about your goals, okay? So this is something I see often is that we got to stop forgetting about our goals and stop forgetting our why. You might get into something, you might start working out for three weeks or so, and then it starts being as important. It's, you stop making a priority for yourself. You start uh, focusing on other life events. Maybe, you know, you, you your, your kids and everything gets really busy in your schedule, and you put yourself on the back burner again. But guess what? If you look back in the past, I bet you've probably done that every single time when you're trying to lose weight. So now you're repeating the pattern again. OK, so this time around, you can't forget your why. You can't forget your goals, because, again, like I said, life is so overwhelming. There's so much, you know, misinformation and, and, and distractions online, especially with weight loss that you're going to get caught up in it. So you have to remember what your plan is. You got to remember why you're doing it in the first place. And you got to tell yourself, like, I'm just going to do this until I hit my goal. There's no plan B. There's only plan A. And I'm just going to make this work. And I'm just going to stick with this, okay? It doesn't matter if I lose motivation. It doesn't matter if if my, my dog gets sick or something like that. Like, this is just who I am now. This is just what I'm going to do. OK, and you seriously, seriously want to make this change. You have to do these things because otherwise you're going to keep getting sucked back into those old patterns over and over and over again. OK, so don't forget about your goals. Do not forget about your why. Now, the next thing, OK, is getting too overwhelmed in the moments. OK, so this is what happens. I see this often with people is that they get so overwhelmed, so stressed out about their weight loss, their they're trying their best and they're, they're messing up and they can't get things on, under control and, and, and they're not seeing the results they want and they just get so overwhelmed that they quit. OK, but the thing is, is that quitting is the worst thing you can do for yourself because it's literally doing the opposite of what you want to accomplish in the first place. OK, so what we got to understand here is that, you know, the reason why a lot of people are get so overwhelmed and caught up in the moment is because they just they're so attached to the result. They're so attached to the outcome. They just want to lose the weight so bad. They want to get healthy so bad. And I get it. I get it. Like, you know, I spent years, years and years being extremely uncomfortable and just hating my body and not being nice to myself whatsoever. So I get it 100 percent. But ultimately, by us stressing about that end result and wanting it so bad, it doesn't serve us. It doesn't do any good because it's just going to make it harder on yourself. You got to let that go. You have to have, yes, goals and things you want to accomplish in certain time frames, but you can't go so caught up and overwhelmed in the moment. Okay. You got to understand that, you know, tomorrow's going to be a new day. If today you had a worse day ever, you end up binge eating, whatever it may be, falling back in your old habits. It's okay. Tomorrow's a new day. You got to wake up, show up for yourself again, put in the reps, put in the work and then keep working on it. Okay. Because, it will happen if you keep showing up for yourself. I promise you that's the magic of time is that as long as you tell, like what I always tell myself is, and, and, and I always tell my clients to do this is like, I always reaffirm to myself that the only thing in between me and my goals and what I want to accomplish is time. Okay. Because I can control what I can control, which means I'm going to control my habits. I'm going to control my actions. I'm going to control the way I think about myself, my thoughts, and, and I'm going to control what I can control, my environment, the food that goes in my mouth, everything there. Everything else is out of my control. The time they get there, whatever it may be, obstacles will happen. I don't care. I'm ready to face them when they happen. All I know is I'm going to get to my goal, and that's all that matters. It doesn't matter if I lose motivation or anything. I set a goal. I will not quit on it. And that's you want to build that mental callus. That is going to help you tremendously with your weight loss, with your life, everything in between. Okay. And it's just practice, just practice, it's just setting little goals, setting little things to push yourself to work on, getting outside of your comfort zone, like literally get used to living outside of your comfort zone. Because being inside your comfort zone is boring. It's the same thing every single time. Yeah, it keeps you safe and everything. And humans want to be safe and feel all warm and comfort. But you'll get the same result all the time. So you got to decide 
um, what you really want. It's like the whole choose your heart. You know, you might be comfortable in your routine and these, and these habits and everything, but you're probably maybe you're uncomfortable in your body or your health and stuff. So in order to change that, you got to get that little uncomfortable for a little bit while you're changing your habits. Well, guess what? Once you're into the new, this is the magic of it all. You know, you might say that you don't like working out or you might say that you don't like these foods and stuff like that. But what's going to happen is that when you make these changes, when you align your identity with the person you want to become and you become that person, what you're going to realize is that you actually do like that stuff. You can learn to like it because that just becomes who you are and what you do. For an example, I hated working out. OK, when I was really young in middle school and, and stuff, your typical teenager, I loved playing Xbox, eating pizza pockets and stuff. And uh, just not taking care of myself whatsoever. And I hate working out. OK, my brother would work out and I always thought and my dad would always push me to work out. And I always thought, like, you know, why the hell would I do that? That's just ridiculous. Like, I just didn't see the value in, in lifting, you know, iron. I was like, what? Like, that's that's ridiculous. Why would I go spend an hour of my time in, a, in this gym and lifting like iron and stuff like that? Like when I can just sit here, snack on some, some really good food and play Xbox or, or, or watch movies and stuff. So I never understood that. Okay. But now it's like in my brain, it's like, I just can't wait to go to the gym today. Like I I'm going to the gym today after work and I just can't wait to get there because now it's just a part of me and what I do and I love it. And I love what it does for me and everything in between. So you can change that for yourself. Now, the next thing is never enough mindset. So this is a little more rare, but this happens. I, I struggle with this a lot is the never enough mindset of like whatever you do, whatever you put in, it's just not enough. And what's going to happen is that you are just going to you're going to ruin yourself by doing this. You're going to have a breakdown because you're going to push, 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 push. And it's going back to that overwhelming feeling. And it's never going to be enough for yourself. OK, so you just got to be happy with who you are, where you are, but never satisfied. You always got to want to improve, want to get better. That's the best thing about this fitness and the transformation is like once you lose the weight, you want to keep going. You know, you want to accomplish different goals, whatever that might look like for you. You know, it's something that helps you. It makes you feel really good because as people, we take a lot of pleasure and happiness from accomplishing goals and make us feel like we have a purpose and we're fulfilled. So it's the best feeling when you accomplish goals. That's for sure. Um, but having this not never enough mindset, it can it can definitely sabotage you. OK. The next thing is impatience. OK, so this kind of ties back to the time thing. So I don't really need to touch on this too much. But. Being impatient with our goals, it's going to it's gonna crash you down because what's going to happen is you might get into a routine. Let's say two weeks, you know, you have – maybe you get into a little bit of snacking. And then for two weeks, you don't see as much progress on the scale or you're expecting to see 10 pounds and you only lose two pounds, which is amazing. But your expectations were wrong and you wanted to lose 10 pounds. And now you're getting impatient. What's going to happen there is you're going to cut the calories more. You'll try to lose a little faster. Maybe you'll do some shakes or you'll start starving yourself a little bit. And then you go back in the old unhealthy ways of doing this. And now it's not sustainable. So guess what? Once you hit your goal, you don't actually know how to maintain it because you never did the proper steps to get there. So then you go right back to square one. OK, I hope that makes sense, to everybody. So we want to we want to avoid that as well. in the impatience. OK, be patient, be patient. I promise you, if you just stick with it, it's going to happen. OK, and five years down the line, when you're living your dream body, you're walking the beach in your favorite bathing suit and you're just so freaking happy with yourself that you did this. You're not going to care if it took you an extra month or an extra two months. You're just going to be like, holy heck, I am so grateful for myself. I'm so proud of myself that I did this. Um, and I, I promise you, that's the truth. So the next thing is having a plan B on your goals. OK, so um, this is important, OK, because even with like the words we tell ourselves, like whenever whenever I say like I'm going to do something, I never like uh, I don't know if you guys ever seen this chart. It's like it's like uh, I want to like the first step is like, uh, I, you know, first step is like I can't do it. The next step is like I wish I could do it. The next step is like I want to do it. The next step is like uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to try to do it. The next step is like, I hope, no, the next step is like, I hope I can do it. The next step is like, I'm going to try to do it. And the next step is like, I, I can do it. And the next one is like, I will do it. And then it's, it's like, I am doing it. So it just shows like there's levels and, and that's like a belief in yourself. Okay. So for example, like whenever I say I'm going to do something, it's like, I'm going to do this. Like, I'm just going to, I'm going to do this. It's not like I'm going to try to do this or I hope I, I, I hope I can do this because I'm, this is me personally, okay? Remember, this is just me personally, but it's like 
if I if I tell myself that like, I hope I can do it, I'm almost like not taking accountability for it. So for me, it's like I'm going to do this. I'm going to go in and make it happen. And don't set a plan B. Okay, do not set a plan B when it comes to this. Have a plan A and go all in on the plan A. Anyways, so that is that one. And the last one is convincing yourself to slack off and, and fall off. Okay, so this is an interesting one because our minds are so tricky. And this is why, again, we got to write down our goals and know why we're doing what we're doing. Because what's going to happen is that your mind is going to trick you so much. And here's an example. You ever wake up in the morning and you tell yourself the night before, Tomorrow's going to be the morning. I'm going to wake up and I'm going to get that workout done. All right. I want to get up. I'm going to prep my meals. I'm going to have an amazing breakfast and I'm going to crush it tomorrow. Tomorrow is the day. You go to bed like that. You wake up in the morning and immediately there's resistance and your mind's already telling you like, ah, you know, Caden, it's all good. It's all good. Just go back to bed for 30 more minutes. Like you, you should, honestly, you didn't sleep the best last night. So maybe you should just get a little bit more rest. So that way you can perform even better today. And then we'll get it again tomorrow if we don't get it today. And it's like you make it in, in your mind. It makes like these scenarios and it sounds so good in the moment and it convinces you. And next thing you know, the cycle continues. Okay. So. What we have to do there, we have to do it. We just have to do it immediately. We can't sit there and think, oh, we can't procrastinate because we'll convince ourselves out of it. We got to know why we're doing it. Okay. We got to know what the goal, what the plan looks like. And we just got to wake up and go do it. So that means not setting the snooze alarm. Okay. Because what's going to happen is we set the snooze alarm. We're slacking a little bit there and that's going to linger out into our whole life. It's going to linger out into everything else we do. So it's like, and I promise you, you know, you're not like you're going to get there overnight and everything, but you practice it. Okay. You practice it, practice it, practice it. You build the habits, you build the discipline and it gets better and better over time. But that is the last one because what happens is like a lot of time. And, um, and this is for like a lot of people who, let's say they worked out a lot when they're younger. Okay. Um, and, and whatnot, or maybe they're fit when they're younger and they lost it. What sometimes happens to those people is that they will slowly, slowly slip up on their discipline. Okay. Maybe they'll go out and eat a little too much. Maybe they'll go out a little too much. Maybe they'll have an extra drinks and they'll stop watching themselves and they slowly, slowly, slowly start to slack off on that. And then the discipline runs out and then they lose their results. They gain the weight, whatever it may be. And then they get stuck in this rut and it's just hard to get things going again. Okay. So we always got to put ourselves in check and, and watch out for that. So that is the training for today though, everyone, the, the mindset training and just things that we got to stop doing when it comes to losing this weight and making these changes happen. A lot of the mindset stuff. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know if you enjoy the mindset topics below. Just let me know like if you enjoyed this and if you made it this far, as always, put a smiley face down below in the comments as well. And if you need any help in making this transformation, we do have a couple spots left. Um, if you want to lose about 20 pounds plus for summer and learn how to keep it off once and for all in a sustainable approach, just message me summer. Yes. Message me summer for details. So I explain that to you. Other than that, though, show up for yourself today. Make it happen. You 100% got this. Summer's coming, and this can be your year if you want to be. I will see you all later.